this afternoon. Um, my story will be about my grandson. Yes, my grandson. <laughs> so I, so I, the title of this story is Joshua. It was January 2012. I was very excited to break the news to my family that I will be going back home for a vacation in three months' time. It was my birthday present from my American employers. So when I was thinking on when to tell them uh, how to break them, because that would be my very first uh, summer vacation in the weeks after like 15 years, 15, yeah, more than. But however, my family was the one who had a surprise for me. I remember that it was uh, it was in the afternoon. I was in the kitchen and about to prepare dinner for my employers. I received a message from my mom. And it says, call me. I replied, I'm busy now. What is it about? So she didn't reply. At the time, I felt that there was something wrong. I tried to concentrate on preparing dinner. I thought, if it is really an emergency, they will call me back. Finally, I'm done for the day. Dinner was over, I cleaned the kitchen, so I told my employer if I could go out for a walk. I cannot wait for that message to be replied. Finally, the moment I stepped out on the gate, I called my mom. I didn't even bother to say hello. I said, what is it about? And then she dropped the bomb. Her daughter is pregnant. I stopped at the moment. I was stunned. And then I felt furious. She was 18 at that time and we never even heard that she has a boyfriend. And she was still studying, and that time when I told my mom, I want to talk to her, but she didn't want it. So I told my mom to do something about it, like go for, go for abortion. I don't want the child, because she was too young. I was crying while I was walking. I've been thinking that I was only 39 years old. I cannot imagine to be a grandmother. My daughter left my house because she cannot face me. My family are very worried, so am I. But I left her. I cannot tell my friends. I cannot tell anyone what I, I was going through. Because I'm here, I felt that they will mocked at me. I felt embarrassed, so there's no one that I could tell my problem. Two days has passed. I received a message from a friend who is a pastor. He asked, how are you today? I felt exhausted in the situation, and so I decided to tell him what happened. And I told him what happened to my daughter and my decision. I never forget what he said. The whole world can turn their backs on their daughter, but not you, because you are her mother. Of all people, you're the only one who can understand her. And for sure, your grandchild will be as beautiful as you. And one day when the child grows up, he will be attached to you. Since then, my thoughts has changed. And yes, it was a deja vu. It was the same. The time it all came back. I was 18 when I had my first born. I was in college too. My my parents did even know that I have a boyfriend. But this time I thought I will face it in my own terms. I asked my sister to look for her, so I planned everything. After telling my family that I'm coming home for vacation, talking to her, everything was going smoothly as planned. So last week of March, my daughter was five months pregnant. 
we are all excited because that will be the time that we will know the gender of the baby. So I remember it was Thursday. I still talked to her in the afternoon. She told me that she and her boyfriend was planning to go for a checkup to, on the next day so that they will know the gender of the baby. We were all so excited. So that night, I was about to go for my Bible study. Uh, and I, I'm very excited to testify that um, tomorrow I will, I will know the gender of the baby. So after dinner, I told my employer again that I will go out now to and go to my Bible study. And then my phone rings. It was my mom. It was a normal call, so I know it's it's emergency. And she said, uh, "Don't." Be surprised. Uh, I just want to tell you something. Then I said, what is it? I remember that day, Thursday night, three days, I will be home in the Philippines, which was my vacation time. But that night, she said, something happened to your future son alone. Then I said, okay, did you laugh? Did you run away? committed suicide. He was 19. And that time, I think it was my low, lowest point because my daughter is so young. I was not there for her. She was five months pregnant. Everybody was excited, including me. And then I asked my mom, how is she? And then she said, she's fine. I think she's still she was still in shock. And then I said, okay, please stay with her. I didn't ask any more things about the boyfriend. And then Sunday comes, I arrive in the Philippines. My sister picked me up at the airport. The moment we get home, we got home, I just go straight to my daughter and give her a hug. And she looks fine. She looks fine. She didn't even cry. So I dare not ask her anything about me. And then I told her, we will go to the doctor tomorrow. Because still, I'm, I'm very excited to know the gender of my baby, of, of my grandchild. And then the next day we went, I cannot wait for that. After the ultrasound, we found out it's a baby boy a baby boy. In my mind, I thought that if only he could, he, he could wait. And then what happened was that I told my daughter, I will be there for you from, the, from now on. I will give my full love and support to you and to the child. I can help you raise him. I can be a second mom. And I will love him more than you will ever love him. That's how I felt at the time. So I started, it feels like I'm the one who's pregnant because I bought everything for him. I sent everything and the, the crib and everything that he needs. And then July 27, was in the afternoon. I remember that it will be a week, my blood will come back from there summer vacation, so I was up in the ladder hanging the curtains, and then my phone rings again, it's a video call. So my, my sister said, she's giving birth, she's about, she's about to give birth, and I said, really? Oh no. So I felt the pain that she's feeling at the time, so I was, I, I, I was sitting on one corner, I was crying, and I said, I know it's very painful, no, she, I should be beside her. It was really an emotional moment. It's a good thing that I was alone because I can cry my heart out. And then I said, uh, call me back again later because I cannot handle this. I cannot wait. The so next was a photo of my grandson, Joshua. That moment was so amazing that I felt so close, so attached to him. He was my first grandchild. I have seven grandchildren, by the way. <laughs> He's seven now, 
<coughs> but what amazing was is since he was born, I'm 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 still working. I'm, I work here and now I'm still working here. He's seven years old now. But the bond between us is very strong. That every time I would go home, he will just sleep beside me. And I think he feels that every time he sees me, he knows that nobody can be angry. My mama is here. He called me Mama B. So recently, I called him. That's when I decided to make this story about him. He said, what are you doing? And then I said, oh, I'm, I'm working now, so I have some <coughs> money to buy things for you when I go home on, on Christmas. And then he was like, okay. Then I said, so we'll talk again later. They said, no. I said, why? I missed you. That's the best feeling that I will ever feel. Thank you.